Welcome to tonight's second part of our doubleheader, the Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Games. And the spotlight shines in Silo tonight as it is Tushka taking on Silo. The girls won our first contest tonight. Please be sure and check that out on the YouTube channel, Midwest Sports Net. 72-35 was the score. Silo moving to 10-0 on the season. It is a boys' contest in which one team is going to come out tonight with its fifth win of the season heading into tournament play as it is sanctioned tournament week this week. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Right now it's Tushka wearing the road black uniforms and letters and numerals in green, trimmed in white. Silo at home wearing the home white uniforms, letters and numerals in red, trimmed in blue. About to get things underway here in Silo and... Tushka will control the tip starting lineups for these two teams as Tushka again on the road. A sophomore, excuse me, yes, sophomore number four is Cole Simpson. A junior number 34, Seth Meadows. A junior number 32, Gary Hoover. A senior number 30, Josh Hauf. And a senior number 10, Tucker Potts. The Tushka Tigers are four and six on the year as the three-pointer is drained by Cole Simpson and coached by Chris Zeich. Simpson gets the visitors on the board first. Triple team inside. Somebody has to be open for Silo. The Rebels starting lineup looks like this. Uh, freshman number one, Kyler Proctor. A senior number 11, Britt Duncan. Senior number 12, Corbin Ford. A junior number 22, Chase Corbin. And a senior number 25, Brett Forgey. Silo coached by Bobby Weil. Rebels are four and five on the year, so each team with four wins coming into tonight. First game of the new year. A new decade, I guess, if you will. Corbin Ford, underhanded pass inside. Shot is no good by Forgy. And he'll go to the line to shoot two. Meadows picks up the personal foul. First free throw will rattle in, and Silo is now on the board. Second free throw will not, and Tushka will force the rebound. Silo four and five on the year. As that one goes a little short, and the Rebels will pull down the board. Losers of four of their last five. One against Bridge Creek in the Bethel Tournament but lost on December 17th at Kiowa, 52-30. to Now the Rebels open the season pretty well, winning three of four, including a victory over Rock Creek right here. Lost to Calera at Calera in the next contest, and then wins at Ashley and at 4,000. Nice look inside. Seth Meadows gets the basket. It's 5-1, Tushko on top. Of course, getting a victory over Rock Creek. It's a big win. Rock Creek has really owned Bryan County in the previous two years, and some teams getting some wins now this year. Maybe a little payback. That one won't quite roll in. But Hoff will go to the line to shoot two. Off calmly drains the first. Again, not much prep. Just grab it and fire. The second free throw will take a little more. Counts just as well. 7-2. Tigers on top on the road here tonight at Silo. Again, coming to you from West Bryan County. The B In South Bryan County again next week. It's the Caddo and Colbert doubleheader there heading into the Bryan County tournament. And Silo cannot get the long-range basket to fall. And 
Forgy will pick up the foul on the loose ball after that. By the way, if you'd like to be a sponsor of the Ryan County Patriot Spotlight game, please let us know. Joey at OklahomaSports.net. Joey at BryanCountyPatriot.com. Either one of those. Rebels get the board, and we'll go ahead and keep it. I want to say thanks to tonight's sponsors, which include the Oil Can, Gallipot Pharmacy, Texoma Engraving, Sales and Trails Family History, Hausner's, and Texoma Financial Services. Our first quarter is brought to you tonight by the Oil Can. You can go see the Oil Can. Now, it's been established in 2019, I realize not that long ago, a new business there in Calera. And you can go there, find it at 10 West Wilson in Calera. It's on the service road there as you're traveling southbound on 6975. Take that Main Street exit just a little bit further south to Main as Tushka will get a steal. And the Tigers will see Simpson go to the line to shoot two. Pick a Rebel to give the foul to. Two players there, each taking a swipe at the ball. And the silo offense has been stagnant, to say the least, here in the opening half of this first quarter. Sampson on the line, excuse me, Simpson on the line to shoot two. And he makes the first. So anyway, go by and see Scotty and his crew there at the oil can. They do oil changes and more. Check it out. New business in Calera. Always like to promote the new businesses in the county. Second free throw won't fall, and Forbin comes through with the board. Mentioned this before, and we'll continue to mention it as the construction is now underway in Calera. Want to definitely support our Bryan County businesses, including those in Calera. Ford goes hard to the basket. He's fouled. And I believe that will be Hoff to pick up the foul. First foul against Hoff. And Ford on the line to shoot two. Luke Justice, the senior, set to check in for Ford. And he did make the basket. So Justice will make his debut tonight. Big free throws there by Corbin Ford. His team trails by five. And Tucker Potts with the pass. Looked like to no one in particular, and it looks like that Duncan got a hand on that one. High pass inside, trying to find Meadows tipped away. Forgy did a great job there. Meadows definitely with the height advantage. Don't have the heights listed. We'll go with Tall. And he's asking for it down low. Not getting much attention from Simpson. He'll drive to the other side. Timeout taken by Coach Chris Zeik. And he'll talk about this just a little bit. It's a 30 second timeout. We'll keep it right here again. I want to say thank you to the oil can in Calera, sponsoring our first quarter tonight. Don't forget also, keep it right here on the MidwestSports.net YouTube channel. Please do subscribe. The goal is 1,000 subscribers here in 2020, and we'd appreciate it if you were one of those subscribers. Check it out. Lots of small college and high school athletics on MidwestSports.net. The flagship show for this channel, Midwest Sports Saturday, will be here in Bryan County. This Saturday, January 11th, Bloomer Sullivan Arena. Nice pass inside Hoff alone, and he gets the basket. It's 10-3. Midwest Sports Saturday, streaming live Saturday morning at 11 on this channel from Loomer Sullivan Arena. Hoff with a block and a takeaway. Give him the block and or the steal there. Shoot, just give him both. And we have a turnover immediately following that as Potts moved his feet. Wrap up that portion of the conversation. Southern Arkansas in town, doubleheader against Southeastern. Both Southeastern teams doing well this year. 
Midwest Sports Saturday in the state of Oklahoma two times in the month of January. We'll be in Oklahoma City on the campus of OCU, Oklahoma City University on the 25th, but here in Bryan County this Saturday. And you can stop by and say hi as well. From the corner, Proctor, skip pass up top, and there's Justice. Proctor a little bit more room now. Fires the three and drains it. Kyler Proctor. And it's 10-6. First field goal of the night made inside the three-minute mark here in the first quarter for Silo. Needed that basket. And we have a violation that time as looked like Hoover was out of bounds. He took the pass. Matters will take a seat now for Tushka, and Jeff Mackey checks in. And time out of the court with that substitution. We'll go ahead and keep it right here. Thanks again for watching. I'm Joey McWilliams, joined by Jayla McWilliams, silent partner in the booth tonight, and helping us with some of the camera work as well as other technical issues here. Silo will head to Kingston Thursday to take part in the Kingston New Year's Classic. And Tushka will go back home to host the Ameristate Invitational on Thursday. Rebels again, three of its first four coming away with W's for Coach Bobby Weil. Then lost three in a row, starting with a loss here against Wright City, then on the road in the Bethel Tournament. Losses to 4A Bing, 4A McLeod, a victory, a two-point win over 4A Bridge Creek. And then losing at Kiowa on December 17th. Block, call it the foul. And I'm not so sure that that foul is going to go against Mackey. It is. And there looked like to be a couple of Tigers in with a you know, hand on the hip, maybe hand on the small of the back. As it stands, it's going to send Forgy to the line to shoot two. And he makes the first. And for Silo, getting points on the board as the clock stops, letting them get back into this one. Really no clock issues here in the first quarter, but I always like to get points when you can. Freebies like that one. Forgy makes them both. He's three for four on the night from the free throw line. Silo on a 5-0 run right now. Tigers feeling the pressure, and we have a foul as this one driving inside. Justice picks up the foul. His first, fourth team foul against Silo. You can definitely feel the intensity on defense stepping up. Passes ahead, Corbin. Can't contain it, but it's going to stay on Silo's end. So now the Rebels with an opportunity to tie or take the lead. Tushka sees Seth Daniel, a senior, check in. And he'll give Hoover a breather. Coming in off the inbound pass. Long-range jumper for Proctor, no good. Nice designed play. <laughs> Tigers can't control it. Finally get it back up top of the key. Hoff, he'll get things going. Trying to work through that man defense now. Potts will travel again. And it is unforced errors now for the Tigers as Tushka jumped out to an early 10-3 lead. And Silo hasn't really allowed them to run away with it, but the Tigers have tripped over their own feet trying to run away with it. Justice, he'll make a move. Defense comes back around. Zone, Proctor for three, no. And the rebound, Tushka. Well, a good look for Silo. And almost, and it was, in fact, another Tushka turnover. 
And you have to say heads up play by Daniel for trying to throw it back in off a rebel. But still, it hit him first out of bounds. So I'm giving a little bit of room up top. Now Proctor on the right corner. Haven't seen him over here just yet. Ball movement opening. Left wing, no. Justice skying in for the board. And they'll slow it down and reset. Less than a minute remaining here in the first quarter. Silo with another opportunity to tie or take the lead. They do. Luke Justice for three. And Rebels are on top for just a moment as Cole Simpson trains a three on the other end. Simpson with six, a pair of three-pointers in this first quarter. One more opportunity. Justice, top of the key. That one won't go. And the buzzer will sound here to end the first quarter. A little bit of excitement in the last few seconds. Turns out, though, Tushka. We'll take a lead into the second quarter here. It's 13-11. Back in a moment on the Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game. Second quarter underway here from Silo. Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game is presented by our sponsors tonight. The Oil Can, Texoma Financial Services, Gallipot Pharmacy, three-pointer by Corbin Ford, Sales and Trails Family History, Hausner's, and sponsor for our second quarter is Texoma Engraving. Stop my text only engraving for all your, well, your engraving needs, but more. Another turnover for the Tigers to start the second quarter. Kevin and Susan Chalk, owners of Texoma Engraving, have their location at 3509 West Arkansas in Durant. And I will tell you that all of my embroidery, all of my screen press, it's all done by Texoma screen print, screen press. We're talking about the press here in basketball. It's all done by Texoma Engraving. Trust me, they know more about the screen printing than I do. They can actually say it properly. All of my shirts, all the things that I have done, especially for you know, the Emerald Quest businesses with MidwestSports.net, Bryan County Patriot, OklahomaSports.net, all of those things done by Texoma Engraving. They can do your plaques, your awards, a whole lot more. Stop by there. Again, 3509. West Arkansas, Kevin and Susan Chalk, and all of their crew will take care of you. Another basket, this time Proctor driving in for this one, and Silo with five quick points to open the second quarter has opened up its largest lead of the game. That's at three. And the Tigers plagued by turnovers in the second half of the first Second part of the first half, Meadows back in the game, and Meadows with a putback, his own, and Seth Meadows with two more points. And he sat down for a significant portion of the first quarter, and there were a number of unforced errors by the Tigers. We'll see what Meadows can do right now, his team trailing by one. Ford looking for an opening, and slings a pass up to Proctor.
Top of the key is Duncan driving in. And Corbin. Chase Corbin and Corbin Ford. So Ford thinks about the long-range jumper, and the uh, Rebels will reset. Right elbow. Now move down low. Forgy has that ripped away. Another block for Meadows. And another turnover for the Tigers to follow. And Tushka just can't get past. They just can't get past, get past their own selves. bit more of a man look right now on defense for the Tigers. And again, it, it just can't be stated enough. Get a couple of good looks on defense, but if you don't get a shot off, it doesn't matter. Forgy passes inside. Corbin can't get the jumper. Meadows with another board. He puts it low, and Chastis is there to tie this up. Possession error will favor Tushka. But you have to give a lot of credit to Justice there for reaching inside and drawing the tie ball. Meadows has an advantage with his height. He needs to keep it. Hoover drives all the way to the basket. Shot won't fall. First time in two or three trips that Tushka's had a shot. And we have a carrying violation. Ford a little too fancy. Dribbling in. And turns it over for Silo. Nice move by Trenton Fugate. The senior gets his first basket tonight. And Tushka is back on top. Justice slows up. And we'll see it passed around the horn. Opening not there for Duncan, though. Near travel by Forgy. Ford had an opening for a second instead. Finds Justice right baseline. Jumper from five outside, no good. Rebound by Hoover, and he'll take it down. Gary Hoover will kick it out and kick it over to the silo bench. Rebels slow it back up now, trailing by one. Content to move it around outside, and you know, Chase Corbin just got a little bit ahead of himself and another turnover. Lots of fans from both sides over on the home side here in Silo. And neither group of fans with much to be excited about. It's a tight contest, but there have just been too many turnovers from both sides. Hoff trying to make a move to the basket and does. Splits two defenders and goes strong to the rack. Josh Hoff now with six points tonight. And Tushka back on top by three. A six-point run for the Tigers. Look inside, Forgy gets around the defender. Nice move around Pot, and Brett Forgy now with two more points. He has five tonight, three silo players <coughs> with five points. And quickly, the other direction, the Tushka Tigers get to, and that prompts a timeout for Coach Bobby Weil. 
Do you want to say thank you again to all of our sponsors for this Bryan County Patriot Spotlight game, Texoma Engraving, our sponsor here for the second quarter. Please be sure and stop by and see them. 3509 West Arkansas in Durant, as well as the oil can, Texoma Financial Services, Gallipot Pharmacy, and Sales and Trails Family History. the score. Corbin Ford in on the action now. He drains a three and ties this one up at 21 all. 2 points the other direction though and an opportunity to put it right back at a three point game again. Count the basket. Chase Corbin will pick up the foul and Josh Hoff will go to the line for the conventional three point opportunity. Ford, by the way, with a pair of three-pointers tonight, has eight on the night. Count the baskets, and the three-pointer looks a little bit different, but it works just as well, 24-21. And now, we saw this a little bit in the first game tonight. Teams starting to heat up just a little bit going into the intermission. Lady Rebels really took control in the third quarter after Tushka tried to get things going. We'll see who can take some momentum, though, here into the break. Silo trailing by three. Ford gives it up. Now Proctor for three. Can't tie it up this time. Flat-footed. Meadows comes away with a big board. Kick his head to Simpson, and he's fouled. Cole Simpson goes to the line to shoot two. Proctor will pick up the foul. Simpson's first free throw is off the mark. Second one good, though. Cole Simpson. He has eight on the night. Ford will dribble through defenders and find an open man in the corner now. Duncan gives it back. Ford nearly loses control and He'll just dribble out of it. Proctor now on the right side. Baseline. Duncan in the corner. Won't take it. Top of the key. Ford. And Proctor goes baseline again. Still not an open Rebel. Now Proctor is. Left corner. Three. That was good. And it is. Ford coming through. Stepping in. Almost coming away with that one. He'll slow it down, though, and the Tigers will get an opportunity. Likely will keep it here as we go into the break. Four-point lead. Don't have to get a quick shot off. Less than 20 seconds remaining now. Rebels' defense is tight. There's an open Tiger on the near side. I'm going to give that one up, though. And we have a foul with less than 10 seconds left here. Now, it's going to be free throws for the Tigers as it will push Tushka into the bonus. For Chase Corbin, it's his third personal foul. Just before the break, one and one front end missed. Hoover chases it down. It's going to stay with Tushka. One more opportunity. Tigers on top by four. Blocked shot, Hoff looks inside, Meadows can't find it, Simpson too long, and we will go to the break as Tushka owns a four-point advantage. 25-21, our Bryan County Patriots spotlight game. We'll take a break at the intermission. Thanks for watching. Keep it right here.
Back here at Silo, it is Tushkin Silo. Doubleheader tonight here in early January. I'm Joey McWilliams along with Jayla McWilliams, silent partner tonight here up in the booth as the Tushka Tigers are on top by four at the start of the third quarter. Justice from the right side is came off the bench in the first half. He starts the second half for Silo. He's out on the court along with Brett Forgey as well as Kyler Proctor. Corbin Ford driving the baseline, and that one loosely finds its way back out to Justice and Brett Duncan for the Rebels as well. Turnover Silo. Tushka will get this one back. Starting five on the court for Tushka to start the second half. That is Gary Hoover, Seth Meadows. Josh Hoff, turnover, goes the other direction. And Silo is going to keep it and get the ball back. And that one knocked around, finally knocked out of bounds by Tushka. Samps, excuse me, Simpson and Potts also out for the Tigers right now. High pass to Justice is... Justice had three in the first quarter. Corbin Ford led the way. A team high, eight points. Kyler Proctor with five. Brett Forgey with five as well for Silo. Hoff with the takeaway, looking ahead. Hoff will get it back. Simpson, a nice pass. Tapped it back to his teammate, and Josh Hoff with a quick two. Nice job by Hoff to find Simpson, and then just a little bit of a touch to get it back. Long range shot by Ford, no good. Justice will tie it up again. Luke Justice is there. Possession arrow favors Tushka, but Justice there with another heads up play. Hoover trying to clear a little space there. Justice won't give him the room, but he'll pick up the personal foul instead. Second personal for Justice here. And the first team foul for either team here in the second half is Justice will take a seat, and Chase Corbin checks back in. You don't fault the effort from Justice. His defense has been pretty aggressive here, and Corbin will pick right back up there, taking Hoover at the top of the key, giving a little space on the outside. And Corbin, great job to get up to knock that one away. Hoover would have been open in the right corner, and you give a little space in that man-to-man -man defense, you better be ready if the pass goes over there. And Chase Corbin did a pretty good job getting that hand up in the air. Now facing one-on-one, top of the key. Hoover trying to find someone to give it to and thinks better of his look inside of Meadow, and he'll travel. Seth Meadows posting up high, and Hoover couldn't stop his momentum. Two points. Salt on the board here in the second half. Proctor nearly lost it twice. I don't know how he came up with that one. He'll get it back. We'll take the three. Skip pass in and out of the hands of Duncan. And another silo turnover. Well, it's been a close contest so far and a little bit of excitement near the end of the first half. But other than that, both these teams really have just committed many turnovers tonight. And each team giving opportunity for the other team to stick around. Tushka now extends the lead to eight. Gary Hoover with his first two of the night. Hoover with three points on the evening. I was just told there's 50 cent popcorn in the concession and all the desserts are free for all you little kids. Oh 
I don't know if you can hear that or not, is driving solid to the basket is Tucker Potts, and his first field goal of the night is there, and it's a 10-point lead, so Silo will take the timeout. Well, it made the little kids happy, the excitement here in the building that uh, for all the little kids, popcorn is 50 cents and desserts are free. And that was enough to fire up Tucker Potts, I think. He went solid to the basket. I don't think he's going to get the desserts for free, but he gives his team a 10-point advantage. And now, Tushka taking advantage of the opportunities where the Tigers had not in the first half and let the Rebels stick around. Coach Weil takes a timeout now, and he'll slow things down to talk about things with his team. He's fired up there in that Silo timeout. They'll set it up again as Silo will bring it in and have to go the length of the court. Aggressive play on offense for Tushka to get the second half started. Silo still without a point here since the intermission. It's been six quick points for Tushka. Silo ready to get things going already, and the timeout had not gone its full 60 seconds. So now it has, and the officials will get it going. Corbin looking for a cutter through the lane. Two go through. He decides not to pass. Zone's extended a bit for Tushka. It'll be a long jumper from way out there. Proctor's going to think about it. It's a long arm of the law there with Meadows. And a high pass to the corner, and I think that was in part due to just Meadows being in the vicinity. Proctor, the high pass, they reset. Ford, skip pass Proctor in the corner for three. Just grazes the rim. Ford will come away with the board and call a timeout. Heads up play by Corbin Ford to keep the ball. And so we'll keep it right here as well. I want to say thanks to our sponsors tonight. And yeah, forgive us, the scoreboard continues to move. Our camera is getting some help from some fans in the vicinity. In the meantime, while we adjust our camera once again, let me say thank you to our sponsors. Those include the oil can in Calera, as well as Texoma Engraving, Texoma Financial Services, Hausner's, Gallipot Pharmacy, and Sales and Trails Family History. Our scoreboard looks a little bit closer there. We'll try to keep it together. Fans got a little bit enthusiastic on the Tushka side as the Tigers start to get some something moving here. Silo needs an offensive set. To be, to be just frank, needs an offensive look. One steady offensive look. The, the zone has been effective for Tushka. A couple of good passes, or possibly, if you can get a quick score coming out of the timeout on the inbound play. It's a man look for Tushka on the inbound. Proctor is open. Doesn't take the look. Instead, they'll reset top. Forgy posting high. Proctor dribbles in, spins, goes up strong. A little too strong with the shot. Can't draw the contact. And Tushka will take it the other way. Long range jumper and count it. Cole Simpson from way outside the arc. And he now has 11 points. points. 34-21. Largest lead of the night for either of these teams. And it does warrant mention that Silo is yet to score here in the second half. Proctor looks inside an opening for Ford. Not there. Rebound, Forgy can't get it. Hoff away. Hoover stops, looks inside. Meadows. Wow, oh, there's a little contact down low. Silo gets away with it at home. Simpson comes away with the loose ball. Ford reaching out. And Hoover in the corner will drive in. He's fouled as he goes to the basket. 
Contact there, and Hoover will go to the line to shoot two. Crowd for both teams starting to get a little bit more excitable and with a little more contact there. Simpson's first basket or free throw is good. Excuse me, that is Hoover. Second free throw good as well. Give him five on the Knights, and it's now a 15-point advantage. And Silo has just gone cold here in the second half. This was tied at 21 all, don't forget, and Forgy will go to the line to try to break the silo scoring drought. It has been a 15-point run, a 15-point run for Tushka. Brett Forgy on the line to shoot two, and he was two for two from the free throw line a little earlier. He's three for four on the night, now four for five. And make it five for six. Big free throws for Brett Forgy. Seven points on the night. And he has given his team its first points in this second half. Hoff alone in the lane. Spins, turn around, no good. Kicked outside, Simpson for three again. Simpson connects again. Cole Simpson with another three-pointer. He has 14 points tonight on the strength of four three-pointers along the way. Pass inside, tipped around. Forgy down low. Forgy for two. Brett Forgy with nine now. And Forgy keeping Silo nominally in this one. Hoff for three. Right corner. A little too strong. And Proctor with the board. Two on three. He's going to drive anyway. And travel. Rebels need a, a stop here. Really just need maybe to get through this third quarter. Ford, nice job to get his hands up there and keep the easy pass inside to Meadows. Silo and a man, man defense here on the inbound. And a look inside to Hoff. Count the basket, and he was fouled. On the inbound, the nice look. Proctor will pick up the foul. It's often challenging to run a man-to-man -man defense coming out of an inbound play. All the screens that uh, can be set up easily. And Trenton Fugate will come in for Meadows. So count the basket again for Hoff. And an opportunity for the and one. Doesn't complete it this time. Tushka gets the rebound. Simpson for three, and he will go to the line to shoot three. Ford came through, picked up the foul, and that's going to send Simpson to the line for three opportunities here. One minute exactly left on the clock here in the third quarter. Tushka will... See, Simpson missed the first. Second is good. Seth Daniel checks back in for the Tigers, as does Bryson Tuck, the sophomore, number five, checking in the first time tonight. And Simpson makes the third. Four for six on the night from the line is Simpson. And we have a timeout on the court. Tuska calls it. We keep it right here. I want to say thanks to the oil can, to Texoma Engraving, Hausner's Sales and Trails Family History, Gallipot Pharmacy, as well as Texoma Financial Services for helping to bring you tonight's Bryan County Patriots spotlight game. Well, it was all silo in the girls' game earlier, 72-35, to 35, the final score. 
in our opener. Tight game through the first half, but it has been all Tushka here in the third quarter. With 60 seconds left here in the period, the Tigers have outscored the Rebels on a clip of 18 to four. Led by Cole Simpson with 16 points so far and Josh Hoff with 13. Three-two look with that zone for Tushka. A high post there, drawing Daniel up to be with Forgy. Excuse me. Yes, that is uh, Mackey in the game. Jeff Mackey in. Proctor can't get that to fall, and it's going to stay with Silo there. Forgy trying to go in for the board, can't draw it in, but Tigers tipped it around. It's Mackey wearing a different number tonight. He's at number 15. And Mackey won't get the block. He'll, in fact, send Silo to the free throw line. It'll be Corbin going to shoot, too. We talked about this in the first quarter, but now definitely having the clock stopped and an opportunity to put points on the board is big for Silo. Corbin can't get that one to connect. Second one is good, though. And Silo gets the turnover. Ford won't be able to hang on to it. Goes right back to the Tigers. Ford looking to make Simpson work this time. As Coach Zeick will have his team look for one final shot. Kicked outside. Someone will need to take it. Ball moves around. Tries to find Simpson running. Can't do it. Point one three seconds left on the clock. Not a, a real legitimate opportunity for a shot here. Just throw it close to the basket. And the horn will sound. That one off the mark. Wouldn't have counted anyway. 43-26, the Rebels get five in the third quarter, and they trail by 17. This Bryan County Patriots spotlight game here on MidwestSports.net, back with the fourth quarter. Tigers come in. Fourth quarter underway here from Silo and the Tigers have really taken control. Eighteen to five was the third quarter output. And Cole Simpson with 16 points on the night to lead his team. Josh Hoff with 13. And Forgy can't get that one, so here comes Tushka the other way. Spin move by Hoff off the glass. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Aggressive move to the rack. And he will reap the rewards. He'll go to the line to shoot to. The 
Makes the first one. Hoff is now four for five from the free throw line tonight. That one doesn't fall. And quick foul the other way by Tucker Potts coming through. And Potts, that's his first personal of the night. Some of the crowd getting up here, heading to the concession stand. As it's been announced a few more things given away free. This time it's T. Ford with an opening there on the zone. Doesn't take that shot. Now here comes Meadows to make him work. Passes inside. Meadows is there. Corbin can't control it. Stays with it. Ford will get it back. He'll drive. Splits two defenders up and around. That shot won't go. And he'll come back with it. Now five on three. Ford kicks out. Proctor for three. Right wing no good. Meadows can't get the board. Proctor on the court finds it. And the shot won't fall. Silo stays with it. Not going away quietly here at the start of the fourth quarter. And Ford will draw the foul from Potts. He's going to stay on Silo's end. Potts' second foul. Rebels trailing by 18. What a good look. And maybe one basket here gets things going, but can't take too much time off the clock to make it happen. Ford for three. That one's too long, and Meadows with the board. Here come the Tigers. Lots of pressure. Duncan, lots of contact on Ford. Looks inside for Meadows off the glass. Won't fall. Hoff tips it out. Duncan leaves for Proctor. Throws it up, can't get the shot to fall. We'll have contact. It's going to go the other way. And Proctor just had too much momentum. Tried to get rid of the ball and couldn't get that shot to go in. And the Rebels now really hurting on the offensive end. We'll play next in the Kingston New Year's Classic against top-seeded Kingston in the primetime game. I believe it's an 8-20 start from Kingston. That's on Thursday night. Proctor wraparound pass inside and Corbin will draw the contact. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Chase Corbin with one point tonight and Tucker Potts doing his best to foul out of this game. Picking up fouls just in the fourth quarter alone. He now has three. Connor Cordell, a freshman, checks in now. He'll give Britt Duncan a break. Neither free throw, well, first free throw falls, excuse me. Second free throw does not. Proctor looking over. It is Carter Parker, the freshman with the free pointer in the fourth quarter. And we have a timeout on the court. And Coach Zyke is actually going to talk about this one a little bit. As Silo needed points, got a free throw from Chase Corbin and a three-pointer from Carter Parker off the bench. And now it is just a 14-point game. Rebels need to continue the momentum, though, here. And Coach Zyke talking with his team, saying, among other things, this contest is not over yet. By the way, Tushka at four and six on the year, looking to pick up its fifth win. Will play host to Calera on Thursday night. That's an 8-20 start in the Tushka Ameristate Invitational, and that is in Tushka. Winner of that game will get the winner of Valiant and Stringtown, and that will be at Friday at 8-20. And just verifying, yes, it is an 8-20 start for the Silo Kingston game Thursday night. That's boys from the Kingston New Year's Classic. And 
We we'll talk about it after the timeout. Full court pressure now from the Rebels. Simpson, and a good job by Parker to get a hand on that one. Carter Parker knocks it out. It's going to stay with Tushka, but that's the kind of aggressive defense you have to play to get back into it. The foul's going to send Tushka to the line to shoot two. It will be Parker and fresh, uh, excuse me, Josh Hoff trying to add to his 14 points on the night. That 14 point matching the lead for the Tigers. Credit Parker with his play coming in off the bench, even with the foul. Don't give up anything easy. Second free throw, no good. And Hoff is five for eight by himself on the free throw line. One look for Corbin. Three black jerseys there. He can't force that one in. Simpson will slow it down. Potts loses it, goes right to Hoover. And Hoover slings it to a cheerleader. Who was not prepared to receive that pass. Inbound. And it works again. Simpson to Hoff again on the inbound. And now Josh Hoff has passed Simpson for a game-high 17 points. Parker moving the ball around. Ford in the corner. Can't find the good look. Near travel up top. It'll be Proctor now. Baseline, does he have an opening? And we have a foul on the court. It'll be an inbound for Silo. Should be just the sixth foul, team foul, for Tushka. Third against Hoff, and now free throws from here on out for both these teams. Zone is extended now, a little bit farther, a little bit farther. Might have hurt to have a cutter for Silo somewhere. Draw some movement from this defense. Ford has the high pass, brings it in. Midpoint here in the fourth quarter. And Ford takes a three and drains it. Corbin Ford, another three-pointer, his third tonight. Thought Meadows might have even gotten a piece of that, but it still goes in. Back to a 14-point game. Hoover can't answer, rattles out. Here come the Rebels. Ford will try again from long range and make it again from long range. It's an 11-point game. And Hoff will bring it down a little more slowly. Now picks up the pace, slows down, and speeds it back up. He'll go to the line to shoot two as... Cordell uh, could not move over quickly enough. Heads up play by Hoff to be aggressive. Very casual at the free throw line, misses the first. Not sure on the minutes here, but I'm not sure Hoff's been out tonight. He's played the entire contest. Makes a second. 60% from the free throw line as he is 6 of 10. Back to a 12-point lead. Still time for the Rebels. Proctor. They pushed out the zone. Now pass inside to Corbin. Can't get the shot off the glass, and Tucker Potts was standing on the line. The ball hit him, and it's out of bounds. Stays with Silo. Wrong place, wrong time. Proctor was open, didn't take it. And Ford steps on that same baseline. Looks like the blue paint must be bigger on that end. 
not really. Full court pressure now. Potts ahead to Hoover and a turnover. The defense works for Silo. Nice decision. Take it the other way. Still a 12 point deficit. And we have a timeout on the court. We keep it right here. And Silo, well, the defense worked. The full court pressure, effective. Tusha got a little bit ahead of, of themselves and of itself and, and really. The turnovers that plagued the Tigers in the first half. If you're a Tigers fan, you don't want to see that happen here with a 12-point lead and watch it evaporate. The one thing for Silo, you don't want to wait too long on these offensive looks. Find the look you want. Take the shot that's available. But understand that there's still time ticking away here in the fourth quarter. Corbin Ford with 14 points tonight, four three-pointers, pair of free throws. Brett Forge with nine points for the Rebels. It is Josh Hoff with a game-high 17 and Cole Simpson with 16 for the Tushka Tigers. Simpson, five, four for six from the line. Hoff, six for 10 from the free throw line. Both hovering around 60%-ish, not quite to 70. I think if you're Tushka, you still like your chances if the ball's in the hands of Simpson or Hoff and what either one could do at the free throw line. A couple of freshmen in here right now for Silo. Connor Cordell to inbound. And Parker just had the ball. He gives it off to Ford. Corbin posting up alone. Here comes the triple team. Kicks outside. Ford for three. And credit to Meadows for being a presence. And we have a tie. Excuse me. We have a foul, actually. Cordell picks up the foul. That'll be a one and one now. It's Simpson. Probably the look the Rebels wanted. Ford has made four three-pointers tonight anyway. That one just doesn't fall. And Simpson's free throw, no good. So here come the Rebels. Good look, needs to be a quick look, but a good look nonetheless. Passes inside, Corbin kicks back out. Proctor for three, no good. And a foul as Chase Corbin will pick that up trying to get the rebound. Well, the looks have been there now on the outside. When the pass goes in, the Tigers collapse on defense, openings outside. And the last two shots just haven't fallen for the Rebels. Meanwhile, Tucker Potts continues the streak of missed free throws for the Tigers. And extends it a little bit longer. Still a 12-point lead for the Tigers, or deficit, however you want to see it, and Proctor drives in. Back to 10 points. Pressure again. Three on one look. Meadows open, count it. Nice look away pass by Hoff, and Seth Meadows has six on the night. Back to a 12-point game. Three-pointer, a little too strong, and Meadows with the board. And Haas going to bring it all the way down himself. Cordell doesn't want to pick up the foul. It will be a double bonus now for the Tigers anyway, and Tushka threatening to run it out. Someone may have to foul here pretty soon. And Hoover is going to drive all the way to the basket. He gets the basket, makes the shot. Gary Hoover found an opening. I question that a little bit. If they're going to let you tick time off. Let them go. Rebels now need the quick look. Trailing by 14. This may be a Tiger win as the seconds will tick down for Tushka. To come away with a victory tonight. It would be win number five on the year as Cordell's shot doesn't fall. Ford saves it back into the Tigers. 
And now Hoover up and under. That one won't go. Tushka will move to five and six on the year and go home and take on Calera in two nights. As Silo will fall to four and seven on the season. Two teams split tonight as that one rattles out for Ford. And the crowd now, now finally starting to head out. A few early goers before some of the three giveaways in the concession stand. Ford tries again. No good. Rebound. Proctor fouled. He'll go to the line. Should be a fun weekend of tournament action around Bryan County and beyond. Don't forget the Bryan County tournament itself coming up in a couple of weeks. Two free throws good for Proctor. He has nine. And 10 seconds left. Potts will hang on to it. And the Tigers will come away with a 52 to 40 victory on the road at Silo. And again, we'll go home to host the Tushka Ameristate Invitational. Silo with a loss, moves to four and seven. On the road on Thursday night in the Kingston New Year's Classic. Corbin Ford with 14 points for the Rebels and nine points for Proctor, nine for Brett Forge for the Rebels in a losing cause. Josh Hoff with 17 a game high tonight, 16 for Cole Simpson. Gary Hoover had seven, six for Seth Meadows tonight. And that will wrap things up here. So, again, thanks to our sponsors, to Texoma Engraving, to the Oil Can, to Texoma Financial Services, to Gallipot Pharmacy, to Hausner's, and to Sales and Trails Family History. I want to say thanks. I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks also to Jayla McWilliams on camera tonight. Thank you for watching. Please like, please share, and please subscribe to this channel, Midwest Sports Net. It is the home of the Bryan County Patriot Spotlight Game. Be sure and be watching next week, next week for sure. One game on the docket, and that is the Caddo and Colbert doubleheader on January 17th. Again, I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks for watching tonight. God bless you, and have a great night.